we're back. Oh, and we have wait. a guest here. This is Will. Yeah. Hello. You might remember him from our very first year of podcasting when we talked about Legionaries. That's right. Dark Gods and Sweaticate. That was the episode. Sounds right. And we've got some Dark Gods again this week with the Felgor. It turns out the Felgor have returned with a nice little 70% win rate, which is not... Not even the highest win rate of the weekend. I'm not surprised by that at all, because I like I was like I didn't think the nerf for Felgor was enough. It was just like a little tap tap a roo, and uh, they've had it in them. How I think it was enough to. It, they're kind of like in the vet guard range where they're like, okay, we're just gonna remove most some of the annoying stuff, but the team is still there. It's still got all the same strengths. Like a free, a free death is still a free death. How many times has Felgor been hit at this point? It's been uh... significant. Well, they got hit like four or five times, but they also got buffed once when they got oh, put okay. back into viability. So when they released, they they died at full APL. Yes. And then the first nerf was zero APL. And then okay. they were like not played at all for a while. And then they put them back into relevancy. And then since then, I think they've been hit like three times. Wow. War paint, war paint, ceaseless or relentless to ceaseless uh, wounds, and. Uh, yeah, so like they've been touched a lot. They obviously are still good. Um, only one actually all the way undefeated. There was another player in contention. So in at Warhammer World, Kill Team Critical Strike Two Three, one of the two GT level events from this week. There was one player who was actually no, none of them were in striking contention. So um, all of them lost the game before the final round. It was just Shane over in Salt City, basically the smallest little baby Northeast tournament with 12 players and three of the Garrett clan in in contention. So he went the nice 5 0, clear, cleaned it up pretty nicely. All right. Yeah, tough competition up there. Yup, yup. Wormblade came Turns out Wormblade remained good. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Wormblade ca uh, came climbing out of the the dust from last week. Um, people yeah. came back, I guess, and yeah, not our most popular episode. But it seems like people don't actually care about listening about Wormblade, but people who want to play Wormblade <laughs> are still out, still out there doing the thing, crushing people. Yeah. What is giving Wormblade the juice right now? What is what do you think it is that because they've been they were high last month too they were really strong last month as well. Um, Wormblade have the combination of like powerful powerful pieces that can trade up and then also a really good turn one play and now it's extended out to like turn two turn three pretty easily. Sure. So you punch pretty well above your seven wound stat block and your big guns are big guns you know five yeah. dice on fours five six AP one. If you just roll a little bit over average, we'll just punch through almost anything pretty reliably. I think also, just the times I've played against Wormblade and really felt the pain, um, it's when the people really know how to use their crossfire tokens and just can really dice fix really well, can just get use the, get the rerolls. Um, well, the other, the other important thing for them is they just play certain missions really well. So secure sure. and loot, If even if you have a bad matchup into a team, you can play secure and loot very efficiently because you just start on the two midboard objectives and force your opponent to interact with you. So it can be kind of hard to fight them on that axis, especially because that can be either the last or the first play of any given turn. So Wormblade have just been pretty good for a little bit. And now with Felgor out of like the easy, easy win button, Wormblade have a little bit more room to mm. fight them. But the real big surprise, I think, is a team that me and Jason have been almost writing off for the last couple weeks since their big nerf was higher tech circle they've been at like a 20 30 percent win rate for the better part of i want to say a month maybe even a month and a half so this is and they're back 10 games what is that like two three three players three exactly three players two of them uh just had one of these i think might not actually be a thing it says tournay like there's a madrid tournament or in chile they had one round and then they did not report anything else and then there was a two round a two rounder and then they went and got, let me see, second place at the Warhammer World Championship. So, wow. Good job. So if I cut out those other results, they still had a really, really good weekend. And I don't actually know if I should be cutting those results up. So either way, good weekend for them and definitely way out of wherever the higher tech bound has been for the last couple of weeks. Yeah, they have been, for anyone that hasn't been keeping up, pretty consistently down in the dumps. Uh, not doing so hot. Um, they even had a couple of like spikes in popularity um, 
more players and still just everyone was getting bad results generally. Um, so it's kind of, uh, it's interesting to see somebody's out there doing well with them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let me see if I can see his roster. The roster is hidden, so I cannot see it. So, ultimately, good job by him. Losing uh, his second to last round. I suspect against John. That part I can probably look at. His name is Jonathan. Yep. Losing his second to last round against the tournament winner, John Reese. Can you roll a crit on Geller Pox Infected? Which is a matchup that I would expect to be probably somewhat rough. You don't have quite enough guns to really shoot everything to death. Your shooting's kind of bad when things get in range. And the big hulks will absolutely delete you, especially now with the nerf to the res wounds. So you're really not going to be able to do much against them. Yeah. Yeah. Looks like Geller Pox in general did pretty well this week. Um, Banger weekend again for the, I think, what is effectively the Chaos Cult's return. But most of the players who play them play them at the WTC or at the World Championships. Or not the World Championships, the Warhammer World Tournament. So still an extremely unpopular team as far as play rate goes. Yep. Inquisition agents also saw a really good weekend, mostly at the World Team Championship between the singles event and the team event. With a you know very good result, so seventy six percent win rate over nineteen games with fourteen wins. So yeah, pretty that's, good. That's pretty kind of a good. trend as well. Like inquisitorial agents, not super duper popular, but like they're pretty often hanging in there with like doing pretty well. Although every now and then like they just tank. So you know, it seems like one of those like if you're looking for a team that has a, a high skill ceiling, um, there's a lot to explore and a lot to play with with the inquisitorial agents. And then one of the factions that basically sees no play from week to week, Chaos Cult, they return with three players, mostly in Spain. Hmm. And uh, doing okay there with 60%. Doing okay, yeah. 60% win rate. A 3-1, uh, a 2-0-1, which means that they actually were in contention to win the game, win the tournament. They got second to Scout Squad, which outscored, who outscored them. So hmm. That's one that was in Argentina. Control. Spanish-speaking countries, uh, the only countries, inter interestingly enough, that still play Chaos Cults, it feels like, because everyone else has, they have disappeared from the face of the planet. <laughs> as far as the most played team this weekend, Scout Squad. And, you know, I don't huh. think I would have predicted this ever, because they've never been that popular. They've kind of been, like, tickling... You know, they're in, like, the top quarter of popularity, but, yeah, a big yeah. jump there. Out of the 31 players that did play them, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14 of those were from, from some version of the WTC, either the singles event that happened on Fridays or the two-day team tournament that happened over Saturday and Sunday. So if I remove those 14, they are, you know, a normally played faction. So it does seem like... out. The perception from that is that a lot of the good players who want to play competitively do think that scouts are quite strong. And Ace actually played them for his part, and he got he only lost one round. Hmm. And how many rounds in the did singles he play? event? He played so the singles event was six rounds, and he lost only one of them. Well done. Yep, uh, losing to Mateusz on Brood Brothers at some point. So the two wins for that one were Mateusz, Carlos, and then Ace in third. So two Spanish players and a Polish player. I think the Spanish ultimately did take it for the World Team Championship. So good job to them. They did have three teams, so they had quite a few mulligans at getting the first place apple. Mm -hmm. I think they got first, second, and then Poland got third. Uh, Grey Knights make a, a small little appearing, you know, with a nice little 55% win rate. They, they're out there doing their best. I secretly hope so. All of them. Grey Knight Doom guy. I was about to make that same. I was about to say that same thing. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, it does look like it was a Denmark Compendium tournament and first place went to Trader Space Marines. All right. Represent. I did that the other <laughs> week. <laughs> Took first with yeah, Trader so... Space Marines at a Compendium. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was uh, Trader Space Marines, Talons of the Emperor, then Grey Knights in that order. So You get a GA2 cultist forward deploy on loot, and it's over, baby. Mm -hmm. Plus, you can totally make a Doom Guy Trader Legionnaire. Yeah. You can. You can. We did. I think he was on the B tier, but he was there. Mm -hmm. I think it was... Uh, I think Maybe he was, he was A tier, because he's, he's like a 4-5 like damage, he heals. 
He's, he's got, got some one big use. stacks. He's a slappy, yeah. slappy dude. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so those are like the big spikes of the weekend. Mandrakes, you know, at one point touted as the meta menace, uh, destroying all of the formats. You know, did that an okay weekend. Lucas did at the World Team Championship team event. He did win all six of his rounds. But overall, you know, from the WTC, most of the Mandrakes did not do all that well. Including, you know, last year's number one ITC, Adrian. He ended up losing, I think, three games. No, four games, actually. Or I think it might be three, because the last round they didn't play, maybe? Let's see. Ooh, wee, 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 wee. No, they played everything. So I think he lost four out of his uh, four out of his eight games or seven games, seven games. So he didn't actually have that good of a showing on Mandrix. Mm. So Which Mandrix, as good exactly as they are, in the, uh, is smacking the average, like their overall stats being 50%. And, uh, you know, like if, if Adrian plays them at 50%, I think it's pretty strong evidence that that's that's mandrix yeah, they're performance not, they're not as broken as they're not as broken as you know past teams at the top end have been broken right i think the big worry and the, the, a lot of the discourse for a little bit was that oh yeah mandrix unbeatable i was like i don't think so there's still nine wounds there's still nine of them like or there are eight wounds there's nine of them like at the end of the day you do need to play it perfectly and your opponents if they have more wounds or better better hammer pieces can really still hit the button and, and donk you yeah I've still yeah. just consistently just like bullied Mandrakes and there's just every time it just it kind of like there's nothing they can do about it if you just bully them and yeah don't play a cagey game with the Mandrakes or the elves in general just make your stat sheet their problem and see how they handle it and adjust interestingly enough Hernkin Jaeger did not do that well this weekend they had a four percent play rate so we've got a pretty big sample size but they had a 40 percent win rate and they have been a team that for the most part, has been at about a 50% for the last, I don't know, like, since their release. Yeah. So, definitely think, one of their weaker weeks, which is kind of interesting. I think it's probably the weakest. Uh, there might have yeah. been one yeah, that might was... Be. I don't think there was anything below 45. I think they were, like, straight up hit, sitting in, like, the perfectly balanced where we want them, like, every week. Uh, yeah, and this is, so they, they've the fallen out. Uh, Imperial Navy Breachers, uh, all the way, all Oof. the way down at the end of the bottom. They probably one of the largest deltas between where they were and where they are now, because they have been absolute dog water for the last, I don't know, three months, four months. So that's and, that's been consistent over the last yeah. however long. I haven't been paying attention well, to their been, stats. They've been really bad over the last year since yeah. we started doing this since we've started wow. doing this podcast or this this part of our content we have never seen them do all that well yeah and, <laughs> and like their, their popularity has kind of been not great and like their win rate wasn't good and now their popularity went up and their win rate went down so it was like people were willing to give them another shot and it just was not panning out i wonder what's going yeah. on with them i yeah. mean they haven't i don't remember they, any major changes like to the them. biggest thing well, that nerfs. happened was their damage reduction was capped at to a minimum of three. Oh sure okay I think it was that, and then the combination of Blitz no longer letting you roll dice afterwards, or your reroll, re or, yeah, re or you yeah. could do, you could reroll, uh, fix your dice, and then reroll a die afterwards. Yeah. yeah. Now you order. get one or the other, and because you get one or the other, now the four up is managing to make it so that your first pivot play, your first big play at the beginning of turn one it with the GA two, yeah. uh, actually can whiff, and mm -hmm. that means that now your eight wound dork set you know damage reduce aren't good enough so yeah. they have taken probably one of the largest hits across the board and they remain taking taking lumps and not not really seeing any love in return uh novitiates legionary high fleet all in the 40 range blades of cane around there also blooded nemesis claw you know around the 45 percent win rate so not too bad so pretty cool week exaction squad another week where they hit about 50 percent uh, one of them in striking contention, Lee Stussy at the Kill Team Saturday. Hey, on 10. yep. Shout out to Lee. <laughs> yep. I think he took yep. yeah, he took second he on Saturday at a local tournament. Yeah, lost to Corsair Voids Guard. So yes. it turns out when your ability to turn off rerolls does nothing, your opponent <laughs> will actually just slap you with a power sword. Uh, he was also, I'm told, a victim of the triple kill pistolier. Yep. Or the fake uh, yes. the was, that was Starstorm the, Duelist. That was the, the conversation in our local Discord because yeah. that was a uh, was a tournament over here. I'm yep. also makes sense. I think it's important as a loyal follower of Zinch to call out that Warp Coven is is a uh, both unpopular and losing again, <laughs> back where we've always been, except with a few exceptions. To be, fair, to be fair, with that one result, there was a player at the Kill Team team event that took Warp Coven, and he only lost one game in the final round. 
Well, well so, done. Uh, so I think Warp Coven are definitely in the range of they are actually good enough, but you do need both good matchups and you need to play perfectly. Well, I am... So uh, you probably got babied a little bit. Yeah, I'm ahead. piloting Warp Coven for the final, the final game of our first Kill Team season league uh, sometime soon up against the same Corsairs player that took out Lee. So uh, here's hoping that Warp Coven can get a can get a big win. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah, so, I don't know. So, like, you know, he only lost the last round. Let me see if I can spot who he lost to. Manu. Pairings. Manu. Uh, it was Kill Team Tertius losing to Felgor Ravagers. But he beats... Uh, Manu. Okay, let's see. Manu. He beat Brood Brothers, uh, fourteen to six against Chris Baki. Mm, wow. Uh, beat Mandrakes, thirteen to seven against <sighs> Ace. To be fair, some of these scores are probably changed up by how WTC does their scoring in the app. Sure. So I don't know if these are the exact scores, mm -hmm. but Manu did win uh, in so, these matchups. I mean, so the are... scores might not actually be correct because those WTC don't sound like easy matchups. Yeah, I was gonna say fourteen to have, six like, sounds like weird... a crazy game. Yeah, they, these are all low-scoring games, so I do think that it seems like uh, Manu is not scoring all that much in the games, but he is definitely beating his opponents. So, Papa Kroot, blooded against Warp Coven. Manu won that game. Manu won uh, Warp Coven against Hearthkin Salvagers, against Germany. Warp Coven versus Hearthkin Salvagers against UK's Bart Lewandowski, who's been pretty good. And then Warp Coven versus Clement Pinkzon from France. And what was the faction? So, uh, Warp Coven versus Pathfinders. Ah. Ah. A matchup that I don't actually think Warp Coven wins, even with all the changes. So. No, I don't, I, don't, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. I mean, even if you take 10, 10 Zangors, I think I would still beat that pretty easily. I... So I'm curious to see how that happened. But, you know, these are these are actual pairings that are big pairings. You know, Hearthkin Salvagers, Blooded, Brood Brothers, quite, uh, Mandrakes once. Like, these are all real pairings that, you know, he was able to best, and he beat Ace. I'm impressed. And I... So. And I think I... My latest he game, was the I actually... only He was the only winner in that matchup against... Uh, Spain Primus. So oh. him beating Mandrix is a big deal, I think. Yeah. Having just finally gotten to the point where I feel like I might be good with Warp Coven, I'm very impressed. And that's after so having oh. played them since they came out. Yeah. That was like the the earliest days of our scene over here was like Will was always there with the Warp Coven. We had like three Warp Coven players back then. You know, we did. I would have expected that the Warp Coven versus Felgor matchup actually would be somewhat reasonable in Warp Coven's favor because Zangors now have nine wounds and you can make sure that all of your charges hit first. So it is kind of interesting to see that, you know, you're, that it didn't work out that way. So I'm kind of curious to see what happened. Maybe but overall, really good job to Spain. You know, Warp Coven, I suspect he got probably babied in the matchups a little bit. But even with that said, getting babied in the matchups and winning all of those matchups is a big deal. Um, I'm curious about intercession. Their win rate is kind of down, but did someone sneak through and uh, do anything sick? Hey, we got our 37% intercession squad. We've got a little 3-0 uh, Torneo 6 in España. So, yep, a little second place in Spain. Losing only by scoring to Inquisitorial Agents. Um, looking at the rest of them, no one's really in striking contention. Someone did lose the first round and win the next two. Looks in one of the Eastern Bloc countries. But that's all. That's all, yeah. So Intercession did you know, about where they are. I, I like they're a little bit too fair. But, you know, maybe, Jason, it's time for you to come out to the New York Open and slap some people with Intercession. I'm getting ready for it. Like, I'm doing my practice games. I'm like, I think I'm going to do it. And I think I'm I'm going to do another uh, square peg that fits in every hole sort of build. And just uh, see what happens. Yeah. 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 Oh, pretty cool weekend. You know, we've got our little we've got our little GT specific image today. And within that slice of the sub, uh, segment, Brood Brothers did much better than the average population. So it does look like if you are a good player, Brood Brothers are overperforming. Scout Squad, for as much as they were taken, 50 50. Felgor Ravagers and Gellerpox also overperforming. So I think 
it does show that there is room for some of these teams that maybe aren't doing that well or maybe have been nerfed to still perform pretty well. I do think that, like, from what we understand, Galapox are pretty good. So it's not too surprising. Yeah. Uh, both of the Dwarf teams are down between the Jaegers and the Selvagers. Uh, looks like they're not doing as well as we'd expect. Um, yep. Novitiates, I'm, I'm definitely surprised because Novitiates are a menace. <laughs> uh, the... They were mostly played within the context of the Kill Team uh, World Team Championship. And at the singles event, they both had about 50-50s. And then in the group play, they didn't do that well. And I do think that Novitiates probably can get bullied a little bit more within team play. Because you can just not get put into a good matchup. And you are you might be expected to handle some of the medium matchups okay. Because you can dice fix your way out of some of the situations. But 10, wound, or 10 model teams with 7 wounds can get bullied a little bit. We can mm -hmm. take a look, though. The best performing of them was Mathieu, who looks like uh, probably a French player. Just from looking at how I read the name, but let's see. Am I... Oh, wait, hold on. Did I... Am I wrong? Nope, it is the team event. Mathieu. Mathieu Richard. Let's find his name. Look it up, Perry. Oh. Oh, wait, no, I'm looking at the wrong term. Do it away. Ooh. Yep, uh, definitely a one of the two French teams. Uh, Novitiates beat Corsair Voids card in the last round. Uh, winning against Commandos. And a which is actually honestly that one is surprising because novitiates versus commandos is i've always conceived of as probably almost an impossible matchup for novitiates hmm. just because any random orc two taps you yeah but it could be a situation where the orc player decided to play a more normal distribution of orcs and did not take choppas and mass because you can just mm -hmm. take orc boys with choppas and just yeah. run at your opponent and just casually two tap them uh novitiates lost a nemesis claw actually surprising so i would expect that some handling of the matchup maybe they put nemesis claw against novitiates on a match where they would expect it to be good so maybe something like capture where novitiates are forced to come out and you can dunk them or maybe even secure something like that Ooh, novitiates versus blooded in a victory and then some of the losses are probably coming up novitiates lose to blooded which would make some amount of sense to me a wider team that can out activate you and force you to interact with them Mandrakes, uh, nineteen to one against Germany. Ouch. And nineteen to one. To be fair, I don't actually think those. Are, like, I think th these are the adjusted. So I think WTC has a differential scoring. So you score the game, and then between both players getting ten points, you adjust up and down on a spread for how how large the point gap was in the game. Okay. So it is a little weird. But nineteen and then to Fobo, one sounds like Fobo's as big beating as it gets. Sure. Hmm. But nineteen to one. I mean, that sounds like the spread's like as bad as it gets. I think I think the max spread is at a ten point delta. So, and then eighteen to two, Phobos uh, Phobos beating it. No is issues. it kind of you're taking the piece of the twenty point pie? Is that correct? Yeah, okay. both of you are getting a twenty point pie, and it's split down the middle. And the the goal is the points differential. So I think if it's a two point differential in game, it counts as a tie. Okay. And it's done so that in a team setting, you know, you can you are rewarded for being able to spot which matchups are good and bad. Sure. Makes sense. Yeah. So Phobos versus Novishi, it's honestly kind of a surprising one. If he I do think that it is reasonable for you for Phobos to be able to take that. Uh, eighteen to two though, it seems like a huge point delta. Wait, so who won that one? Phobos won that one. Phobos won that yeah, one. Yeah, So Novishi it's lost against Phobos. Phobos, Mandrakes, and one more. What? Uh, okay. And Blooded. Those were the three big losses. Yep. So, interesting weekend for them. Yeah, in general, at the GT level, Elite's kind of down, still fits the trend. Yeah, even worse. Even worse than they would be normally. Alrighty, any other big questions? I think that's kind of the, the big stuff for me. You got anything, Will? Uh, 
I don't know. Like, how does this? Co so uh, one thing I notice is when we look at your graphs, uh, it's about half red, half blue. Is that typical for a week? Uh, this week actually is a lot. The last two weeks have been a little bit wider as far as the red bars to the blue bars. So sure. red bars tend to be ones that are either over or under. And then the blue yeah. bars are just barely in range mm -hmm. of what GW says they want. Yeah. So I think this week has been pretty split. We've had, I think there was one week in particular where things were pretty, pretty tight. But it's mostly always been weeks of winners and losers. Yeah. Yeah, which which would make sense, like from a broad uh, population size, because we don't have two thousand players. You know, things are gonna tend to be a little bit bigger. And it it is a, a zero sum weekend. game. Uh, yeah, I was just curious. So if you're losing from one bar, you're coming out of another. But there, this week definitely has a lot more red and blue. Some weeks we've had, you know, probably a third of them in the red zone. Okay. But I do think like the actual ideal goal, at least for a game like this, of forty five to fifty five, is probably just not reasonable until we get to maybe three or four thousand games played yeah i, I mean it's a very back. small sample size yeah we've only got 283 players in the data set this week yeah yeah another week that's kind of down yeah and who knows maybe that'll be because there have been a lot of rumors and we'll see what happens in the future that's true and for our Patreon listeners, thank you for supporting us. For people catching this on YouTube a little bit after, a couple days after we release on Patreon, uh, happy to have you. Make sure to like and subscribe in the comments. Yeah. And if you could offer just a little prayer to Zinch, wish me luck in my ma upcoming match against the Corsairs. We'll see y'all next week. <laughs>